Let's take you back to the first story we had on the news talking about uh, a bill for the establishment of state police passed by the second passed the second reading in Nigeria's House of Representatives on Tuesday after a lengthy debate. Now the bill which is sponsored by the Deputy Speaker Ben Kalu and 14 others, aims to amend the 1999 Constitution by removing police from the exclusive uh, legislative list and adding it to the concurrent list. Now, to make sense of uh, this particular move by uh, Nigeria's uh, legislative arm, I am being joined on the news right now by security experts and executive director, Alexa Trust Foundation, Emmanuel Ikule. Thank you for your time, Emmanuel. Thank you for having me. All right, now what do you make of this move by the House of Representatives in Nigeria? Um, for some of us, we have all, always advocated for community policing. Uh, looking at the way uh, policing have been handled in the country over some years, so we are always looking at having that, building that community police relationship first, then pushing it further to having a state police. Because if that the, the relationship between the community and the police is not being addressed, it's more like splitting one problem into 37 states. That means the problem will expand because the, the foundation was not laid properly. So, but at the same time, it's the decision to have a state police uh, always rests in the hands of the people. We know very well that a state like ours at this time, normally we should have a state police in all the states. But we are looking at the preparedness, first, of the people, secondly, of the political elites we have in the country, how they have been able to use security agencies, how they have been able to use it for their own good, not for the state. When you look at all those things, then you... Some of us are a little bit um, more scared of how prepared we are to have the police now. Mm. But with the security situations and all that, certainly is the step that uh, the government is making. And we're hoping that we can all be given the opportunity at public hearing to make our own inputs so that we have a more comprehensive, um, as we plan towards having a state police, if it's been agreed and accepted, then there are certain things that certainly they need to take into cognizance in the formation and to ensure that these things are in place before it becomes a law. All right, Emmanuel, I'd like to stick with you on the second uh, issue you raised concerning concerns uh, as regards this particular move. You talked about the political class, and that brings me to the question of uh, the fears by s in some quarters that um, governors, for instance, might use it for uh, personal reasons as against collective good. Do you think that should this uh, uh, bill scale through and it becomes, uh, it sees, you know, the light of day? Um, how do you think uh, abuse can be checked? Or do you foresee a situation whereby uh, during political seasons, for instance, uh, some of these state governors uh, might just, you know, abuse uh, that privilege and use it for their personal benefit? Um, that is it, uh, uh, my thought, and but... Uh, because particularly in 2020, when um, during COVID-19, a lot of persons took power in their hands and used the police the way they were not supposed to use them. But in going further and trying to see that those excesses can be checked, we can advocate for a system where maybe commissioners of police first are not being appointed by the sitting governors. But if they are being appointed by the sitting governors, then they can only be sacked or dismissed by the House of Assembly. That means the, the sitting seats, commissioners of police also have, they, are, they, they, they don't have fear of being sacked by the governor where the government wants to use them as puppets. So they can be able to carry out their, their work free and fair without interference. And then secondly, the uh, internal complaint mechanism. Now, currently, we have the internal complaint mechanism, the CRU. Uh, uh, we have other internal complaint mechanisms, the X squad and the rest. But the internal complaint mechanism, like the CRU, that the current uh, IGP has advised to be spread across 36 states, will advocate that they should be able to carry out their mandate in line with uh, what is contained in the force order 237. If they cannot be able to carry out their work of oversight, 
or the police service commission also there will also be that need they that are the, the external uh, oversight agency they also have to expand in the 36 states also to be able to monitor the conduct of policing in those separate states so even if the governor instruct them or instruct officers to do that which is wrong they will also sanction those persons because the po new police act actually protects um, police officers acting in good faith. That means if you are being given a wrong directive and you decide not to carry it because it's wrong, you will be respected. And even if the state try to sack you, the law permits that you should be reinstated back into uh, your position. So uh, the internal complaint mechanism should be working. And then appointment or dismissal shouldn't both be in the hands of a governor. Mm. One, either appointment should be in the hands of the governor and dismissal in the House of Assembly. One should not, both shouldn't be in the hands of one person. Because if it's in the hands of one person, just like the IG is in the hands of the president, then it means we are still sharing the problems over 37 states. All right. Uh, thank you so much for your time, Emmanuel Ikule, of course, a security expert and executive director at Lixia Trust Foundation. Once again, thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.